Hey guys, check it out. Behind me is a new 2021 Nissan Rogue. It is competing in a super popular segment against vehicles like the Toyota RAV4, the Honda CRV, and Nathan's car over there. Nathan, what do you got? I have the 2021 Mazda CX-5 Signature, which is a turbo with all-wheel drive, and it is not as fresh and new as the Nissan, but it's a lot more entertaining. And between the two vehicles, I think we're gonna talk about the fact that one appeals to your brain and the other one appeals to your heart. And we're gonna find out which one's better. Let's start with the design. Now it's an interesting contrast because my lack of mental acuity and immaturity really brings me to this vehicle as opposed to Tommy who is an 80 year old man who really does think logically and he's more attracted to the Nissan. One of the reasons why for me is the looks. I love Kodo design. I am completely honest about that. I'm a Mazda fanboy when it comes to design. Look at the front of this. Just the creases, the way they did this hood design alone. Mwah, beautiful. And in terms of the overall design, yes, it does look a little bit like the CX-9 and all the other vehicles. Who cares? Because it's beautiful. Look at this. I absolutely love this design as well. The way it comes in and it bulges out the rear fenders and the taillights. Everything about this design to me is passionate. And this is a crossover. Not bad. But Nathan, yeah. I have nothing snarky to say about the design of the CX-5. <laughs> exactly. It is good looking. It is, isn't it? It's a good looking car. Let's talk about the Nissan. The overall design of the Rogue is certainly a little bit less curvaceous, a little bit less elegant than the Mazda. Still a pretty good looking vehicle in the front here. I see a lot of Nissan Juke. I see a lot of Nissan Armada along the side. It's kind of flat sided, although the black roof is pretty cool. And then in the rear, well, it's got tail lights and an exhaust and some badging. It's a, it's a car. <laughs> what do you expect? Well, speaking of cars, check out the wheels over there because those are almost right off of the Nissan Altima. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. I actually kind of like this. This is an all new design and it looks a little bit more trucky than the Mazda, don't you think? It does, yeah. It's kind of more squared off than the old Rogue, which is good, but it's, um, I don't think it's quite as handsome as the Mazda, but let's check out what's underneath the hood. All right, guys, a couple things going on here. Now, first of all, you may recognize this engine because it's in almost everything Mazda builds. At this point, this is an optional engine in the, well, it's standard in the CX-9, it's optional in the CX-5, and now the Mazda 3 actually has a version of this. This is the 2.5 liter Skyactiv G turbocharged engine. Now, it puts out 227 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque, however, if you put premium fuel in it, it'll put out even more horsepower, up to 250. That is great and all, Nathan, but that comes at a cost. This Mazda is rated at 24 MPG combined. Ew. The Nissan rated at 28, so that's a pretty big difference. That's a big difference. Now bear in mind, these are both all-wheel drive models. This is standard with all-wheel drive. That is optional with all-wheel drive. This does have a six-speed automatic transmission, which many people will say, well, that's the reason why it doesn't get good mileage. I say that's the reason why it's so much fun to drive. Yeah, well, wait till you see what's under the hood of the mighty Nissan. Currently, there's only one engine option in the new Nissan Rogue. It's a 2.5 liter four cylinder. It doesn't have a turbo like Nathan's car. It's rated at 181 horsepower and 181 pound feet of torque. And it's mated to an Xtronic transmission, which has got to be good, right, Nathan? That's a continuously variable transmission, a CVT. Now, this does have all wheel drive, it's an option. The thing is, is that this is a really efficient setup, but there is a negative, Tommy. What? Tow rating on this is around 1,350 pounds. The Mazda can go up to 2,000 pounds, both when they're properly equipped. So even though this is more efficient, it doesn't tow very much. Yeah, but this one comes with Xtronic. It Just sounds good if you're a PR person, I guess. It does sound very <laughs> good. Two numbers that are important here, 30.9, and 59.6. That's the cargo space in this vehicle, 30.9 behind the second row, 59.6 when everything's folded. It's not great, honestly. Part of the reason why it has to do with the shape of the back. It still holds a decent amount. Also, these seats do fold. I really like being able to do that. 
it's not completely flat. Also, you know, if the seatbelt wasn't here, it would fold in the seat and blah, blah, blah. And also, space behind the driver and front passenger isn't the best. It's okay, but I think Tommy's is better. Yeah, wait till you see this. This is by far the best part of the new 2021 Rogue. It's got a very squared off rear end, and as a result, it holds a ton of stuff. With the seats folded down, it will hold 74.1 cubic feet of things, which is well more than the Mazda over there. With the seats folded up, it still is very, very practical. I also have these little false floors, which can act as dividers to keep things separated from other things. This has got a redonkulously big storage capacity, and if you're looking for one of the biggest, kind of most useful vehicles in class, check out the Rogue. Yeah, it's up to 36.5 cubic feet of space behind the second row, which is really impressive. This is also a more comfortable vehicle, has better headroom and better legroom. But, th there's no but, it, it's just, it, it's a lot more utilitarian. Well, let's check out the interior design and see uh, who wins there. I'm sorry because they gave us a vehicle that unfortunately has a black interior. In fact, both of them have black interiors, so it's hard to see how beautiful it is inside the Mazda. They have absolutely upped their game to the point to where I would challenge a lot of European automakers to have an interior this nice. With that being said, there have been some updates, including this, finally. They increased the size of the infotainment screen it was like seven, it's now 10.3 inches, significantly better. The thing is, when you're looking at this whole thing, this is how you control it, all right? This little thing down here. A lot of people don't like this. Fortunately, there's no one for it now. Yeah, it doesn't, um, damn it, Tommy, I thought it was a push button. It's not. No, so, uh, Nathan, the interior is very nice in the it new is nice, Mazda, it? Yeah. yeah. But the screen is still a mess to use. And the little iDrive-y kind of knobby thing is just... Oh, no, it's not... Wait, wait, let's see if it... But, uh, no! no! No, come on, let me push! No, it's yeah. not a touch screen, buddy. I hate to break it to you. I thought that they would do that. Well, here's the good news. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are now standard, finally. Um, that was something they only recently did. And it is a better system than before, but unfortunately... It still lags behind in terms of techno technological punch. I think I said that correct. Remember, there's a lack of mental acuity. Now, the other thing I will say is that the seats are comfortable, but they're a little bit on the small side. Look down here. Even Tommy, who's ridiculously tall, um, his legs, his knees will be about here, right? The seat itself is just very small, and it's very similar to the seat that's inside of a Mazda 3, which is a smaller vehicle. So that's a negative. But the positive is, you're in such a beautiful environment, you'll forget the fact that you're on small seats. Until you look up, and then you realize you just have the little tiny sunroof. <laughs> yeah, it's tiny. Wait till you see what's in the road. The interior in the new Rogue is so much improved over the outgoing model. The quality of the materials, the overall design, and the functionality is just better than the outgoing Rogue. There are some areas that are still, you know, a little bit cost cutty Some of the plastics on the non-touch points could probably be a little bit um, better assembled, but the actual stuff you touch, the steering wheel and the seats and the gear shift, all feel pretty good. And then we get to the touchscreen infotainment, Nathan. It's smaller than yours, it's nine inches, but it's a little bit better. Yeah, the thing is, is that you've got more tech, especially standard tech, aside from the safety stuff and everything else that you get standard with this vehicle. You get a lot more, and that is a touchscreen, which, frankly, I prefer. Yeah, that, leave it on Van Halen. No, I guess we can't do that, can we? Uh, yeah, I gotta pay for that. I so, hate Van Halen. So does Roman, and you know what? You guys have problems. <laughs> anyway, the other thing is you have this massive sunroof, which is something that the Mazda doesn't have. This is an option, obviously. But... I think that the Mazda interior looks a little bit more premium. I do. I think I agree with you completely. The seats are pretty good in the Rogue. I mean, they're, I, they're, they're way better in the Rogue. You like them more? Yeah, than yeah. Rogue? For my big American ass, these seats. These are the zero G seats up front. Very comfortable. Good back support by compare by comparison. And look, much larger bottom section. 
once again for the large American tushy that I have. So that is much more comfortable. And I like the flat bottom steering wheel, which is great for um, you know sport and chunky people. <laughs> sport in the road. I think it's a more <laughs> chunky people. Now here is where things get interesting. So this is the SL trim. It comes in at about thirty-eight thousand. That Mazda is the signature, so it's about a thousand dollars more, thirty-nine grand. Nathan's got something to say though. Yes, I do, because if you get the top of the line version of this vehicle, then the prices are almost identical between the two of them. This is not the top of the line. Right, so there's still one more above this. That'll give you like the full digital instrument cluster. This mm -hmm. one's still partly digital, but you don't get more power in a more expensive Rogue. You don't get, you know, all that much more usability in terms of cargo capacity. So this is still a pretty good comparison. Yeah, I think so. This is heart versus mind. Well, let's see what that means and let's see what that translates to on the road. I'm removing my Van Halen face mask and I'm turning on the actually rather nice stereo system and playing Van Halen on Ozzy's Boneyard. I wanted you to know that because I was curious to see if smoke would come out of your ears from my standpoint. Is that really a Van Halen face mask? Indeed it is. Anyway, um, I'm going to uh, follow you and um, enjoy my drive while you have a nice leisurely drive. I will say that on the road, the Nissan Rogue is not to be rushed when it comes to acceleration and merging and passing and overall speed of travel. Yeah, it seems to struggle a little bit at high elevation, that's for sure. Yeah, it's got 181 horsepower. Um, it'll probably be fine for 95% of drivers out there, but here, I'll give you a little bit of an acceleration test. We'll see if... Uh, you were able to keep up. Are you ready, Nathan? Yeah, go ahead. All right, I'm floored. There's 30, 40. <laughs> yeah, I caught you in about six seconds. Yeah, I mean, I wish that Nissan would offer a turbo option in the Rogue or some kind of hybrid like Toyota does that ups the performance, but hey, like I said, most people aren't going to care in this segment. The other thing too is it does have the CVT, which is a little bit whiny. It doesn't really give you a very positive engagement as you accelerate along, but the rest of the car is pretty good. It's very soft and the seats are uh, very squishy on the road. Yeah, I, I find that the Rogue is actually a very comfortable driver's car. This one that I'm driving, the Mazda, is a little stiffer sprung. I don't care because it's so much damn fun to drive. You know the real big difference is, aside from acceleration and the fact that my car looks cooler, is the fact that the steering, the feel in the steering is just fantastic in the Mazda. There's also a naturally aspirated version of the Mazda available if you want a little bit higher uh, fuel economy than that one. But yeah, overall it is a more fun car to drive. Yeah, the extra money you're spending, which is around $2,000 or so to get the turbo engine is worth every penny, except for the fact that it's less efficient. Now, as we're merging onto the highway, I'm happy to say my infotainment is working as it should, and I'm going to engage my safety shield, basically the autonomous functionality of the Nissan. Yeah, I don't quite have that. What I do have is, um, you know, I, I, I do have lane keep assist type system, and I do have a radar control. I don't know if I have lane keep assist. Let me see if this works. Hold on one second here. Yep. Yes, I do have lane keep assist. I'm trying it right now, and it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's yelling at me. <laughs> yeah, the Nissan has all sorts of advanced safety tech um, for the price, including adaptive cruise control and all the late keep stuff. And it works pretty well. I do like the Nissan system a lot. So I think it's um, in some ways better than what's offered on the Mazda. It's a lot better, actually. It's, it's more intuitive. It's a little bit easier to use. And it's just uh, a little bit more transparent. So I will give it to uh, Nissan, giving you a lot of tech for the money. You know, Tommy, I think I finally came down to exactly where these two vehicles split off. If I had to go cross country and a leisurely trip with the family, your car is absolutely the choice. If I want to drive around and actually have a good time in the canyons and have a fun day commuting, this is the right choice. Nathan nailed it out of the park when he said mind versus heart, at least in terms of how you buy these vehicles. The Rogue is a solid contender. It just holds so much stuff. It's pretty good value for the amount that you get in terms of technology. It's just not that great to drive, at least compared to that Mazda. Now, personally, if I'm going to be buying a vehicle in this class, I want all that storage capacity and that kind of just squishiness, so I'm going to be fine with the Rogue. But what about you, Nathan? Which one did you have? I am willing to sacrifice for the Mazda. I like the Nissan Rogue. Everything they've done with it is great with the exception of the fact that it's just not very fast. It's a really slow car, honestly. But 
It handles better than it used to. It gets good mileage. But the way I look at it, Tommy, real quick math, it costs about $375 per year to fuel that vehicle, the Mazda, over the Nissan, right? I'm willing to spend that money to drive the Mazda. That's how good I think it is driving wise. And it's going to cost you way more than $300 a year to deal with the complaining wife and kids who are crammed into the back seat of the Mazda. But... Dude, wait until you're married. You'll understand. No, you won't. No, I won't. Well, as always, this has been Tommy and Nathan with TFL Car. Check out TFLCar.com for the latest and greatest in new car comparisons.